off the NCAA's. Uh, good performance there, both by the uh, the men and the women. Uh, probably have left a few points there on the uh, men's side, but you know that's uh, why we go and run the uh, run the meet, and then we're close the book on that uh, season, and now get ready for the outdoor season, in which we open up with a split between um, Stanford and um, Florida Relays. How do you, you, the schedule seems to have broken pretty well for you. You got the indoor meet in, and then kids could sort of take a break and concentrate on schoolwork. Is, is that pretty optimal, the, the way of? Unusual, for sure. Yeah. Um, because usually we'd be gone by now for, for spring break, and I think it's that extra week uh, there that we had. Um, that allows us to be here a little longer and to get through exams and then uh, to finish up exams and still have an additional uh, week. So um, definitely favorable. Brad, with the women's, one of the storylines for this women's team is, is the Triple Crown and, and Sasha was just talking about how they don't really talk about it. Is, is that something that you would prefer that they just kind of put that on in the back of their minds and not think too much about it I don't know if I prefer or, or not you know kids these days will have a, a mind and a life of their own but as far as programmatically it's something that um, we talked about uh, after cross country and then it's already been stated the white elephant has been taken out of the room and now it's just back to business as usual and working on each day you know trying to get better each day uh, don't worry about what happens uh, outdoors because outdoors isn't here yet with that said, the women's team looks really formidable. You know, what are your expectations for them this season? Well, last time I heard that word formidable, they were talking about uh, if we were in the SEC, uh, would we be formidable? Um, yeah, we probably would. <laughs> um, but looking for outdoors, just good overall performances, building, 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 building uh, throughout each meet. Um, you know, a little, little disappointing that we don't have a few home meets here. Um, at home, uh, of course, the whole scheduling thing, um, and we were, now we are, now we weren't again, and now we are. So just the whole back and forth and that, but um, you'll see us uh, do some of our traditional stuff. Uh, we'll go to, to this meet, we usually always go somewhere for, for spring break, um, and then you'll see some kids go to Peyton Jordan, you'll see some kids go to Mount Sac, um, and then we'll kind of rally up around here and see us go to Pen Relays. Um, and then back here for the uh, twilight meet before we get ready for the uh, conference meet. Does getting the Pac-12s kind of have it landing in your lap last year? Does that take some of the sting on not having some early home meets? Absolutely. It definitely um, has that. If I had my choice, I would have no meets and just have the Pac-12s here every year <laughs> if we could. Um, but um, that the rest of the conference, and that wouldn't be fair. But um, definitely takes this thing out of, of not having meets here to be able to host uh, probably one of our crown jewels uh, of meets in the in the country. Um, you've announced uh, in recent days uh, promotions for uh, Curtis and Jill. Can mm -hmm. you talk about them and sort of uh, your decision maybe to, to give them more responsibilities? And yeah, um, it's kind of one of those things to where they, they've been here from the beginning. Um, Curtis has obviously done a fantastic job, something that has probably been done since the start of school year, and uh, we just had to go through, jump through some logistical things there, um, and now that they're finally done to make it uh, official um, and get them all the, the back pay and all those things that go along with those, um, those promotions, but um, just good people. Um, part of our success is just surrounding yourself with good people, and we're fortunate enough to be here and have the support of our administration and our, and our president and the board that um, allows us to reward those good people. And every chance we get an opportunity to do that, we see fit to, to definitely do that. I know you guys haven't even had a meet yet, but is there anybody redshirting this year that you know for sure is, is gonna take a redshirt here? Not right off the top of my head. Um, there's, there's a few there that um, are possible, but um, nothing nothing comes to comes to mind uh, right off the top of my head, but um, I know that uh, the meet after Mount Sac will be the last time that they should be could be able to redshirt and not be penalized. So if you haven't seen them run past uh, Mount Sac or after Mount Sac, then you know they're pretty much uh, redshirting. But I'll have a better idea, or we'll have a better idea uh, after that time. All right. And Kari King transferred here in Western Kentucky because there was the men's track team that had was dissolved. When he was yeah. coming here, did he reach out to you first or the other way around? Yeah, even more, you missed one there. Um, even more so that he was at Mount Sac before he was at um, Western Kentucky. So he gets a chance to kind of go home uh, there when we go there for, for our meet, even though it's not necessarily at Mount Sac. Um, but 
Did he reach out to us? Uh, yeah, um, his coach. We talked to his coach there, Brian, um, at Western Kentucky, who does a good job there at, the, at their school. Um, and, of course, we kind of knew Ky Kyrie from um, him being in California, and we kind of recruit that area pretty hard. So uh, we talked to him before, um, before through the rally process. And ever since he has come here, how have you seen him develop as an athlete and as a person? Mm -hmm.